Time to play! As can be. All right. Orders for me. Aye, aye. you want. Time for your punishment. Aye, aye. Careful now. Orders? Yes. Hi there summoners, Guardian E here with another Camilla Emblem Clear video in Fire Emblem Heroes and today we're taking on the legendary hero battle on Abyssal difficulty for female Alir, Awoken Divinity. 
So here she is uh, in all of her glory, our first uh, brave dragon unit in the game. She's a green dragon infantry unit, and really she's just solid and a threat all around. Like I said, she's a brave unit on both player and enemy phase, so that does mean she's going to hit like a truck. Um, she's naturally speedy as well, which does mean that she has the ability to quad. She has her own unique special that does damage reduction piercing, so she can nullify damage reduction on the enemy team. And she's also very, very tanky, has a high defensive stat line, and additionally stacks a bunch of uh, damage reduction on her side of things uh, on enemy phase and player phase. So naturally tanky, naturally high damaging, uh, also has Null C Disrupt 4, so that does mean that um, sweep weapons are not going to be very effective against her because she can counterattack irrespective of whether or not you have a sweep effect on your weapon or your kit. The one arguable weakness that she had was that she didn't have any innate distant counter ability. But they did fix that by slapping distant counter dragons on her for the seal, which does really kind of complete her kit, makes it entirely cohesive, so that she's basically a threat at all ranges, uh, both phases, uh, whether she's player phasing or enemy phasing. Now in terms of enemy troop composition, we've got a healthy variety of enemy weapon types, movement types on the enemy side. Uh, got cavalry, got flyers, got dragons, got melee, got range, magic, all, you know, it covers all of the bases basically. There's a ton of variety in both the um, initial batch as well as the additional reinforcements that happen. Now, I will say the one movement type that might be underrepresented is armors. I don't think there's really any armors that appear on the field, so... Uh, so not really a whole lot of armors, but again, the staples are here. There is a cleric that appears as well, which is, again, standard practice for a, a, uh, an abyssal level map. Uh, in terms of map composition, there is this interesting asymmetry to the map because the plant structures here, that they're, they're offset, right? So one's closer, one's farther. On the, uh, on the opposite side, they're symmetrical up here. Um, and, and this actually does provide some decent cover. It doesn't, it's not terribly limiting on your side in terms of movement capability, but it does allow you to funnel enemies a certain way. Um, and, and cut them off as they're making their approach. So it, I would say it's actually relatively favorable uh, for the player the player team. So let's take a quick look at the Camilla team that we brought with us today. So we got Vanilla Camilla here, Bewitching Beauty, plus 10 uh, attack and speed assets, plus 15 Dragonflower, Summoner Support, Arcane Downfall with attack uh, refine, Reposition, Aether, Distance Dance, Quick Repost 4, Joint Distant Guard, and Defense Res Form 3 for the seal. We got Brave Camilla, Light of Nor Camilla at plus 10, 15 Dragonflowers, Attack and Speed Asset, Summoner Support. Uh, Native Sangreether with Special Refine, Rescue Plus, Holy Pressure, Attack Speed Catch 4, Poetic Justice, Goat Flyers, and Attack Speed Catch 3 for the seal. We've got the Fair Pirate Pair of Hinoka and Camilla, plus 10, 10 Dragonflowers, Attack and Speed Assets, uh, Mermaid Bow, Reposition, Deadeye for the special, Attack Speed Push 4, Speed Res Far Trace 3, Defense Res Rain 3, and Attack Speed Form 3 for the seal. And then finally, we've got Ninja Camilla, Midnight Bloom Camilla, plus 5 Dragonflowers, plus 10 Merges, uh, Attack and Res Assets, Flowery Scroll, Reposition, Glimmer, Close Salvo, Seal Res 4, Attack Res Hold, and Attack Res Form 3 for the seal. So one of the bigger weaknesses on the enemy line is this tile right here. Uh, the Lance Cavalier is in the range, but nobody else is. So this is a pretty safe starting point uh, to engage on the enemy forces if you've got a tanky green. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to offensively reposition Vanilla Camilla in the range here to engage. And then we're just going to saddle up next to her in T formation to provide her with support. Um, she's going to be able to tank the Lance Cavalier without any issue this turn. Lance Cavalier is actually pretty darn tanky. Uh, with their kit, so they are going to survive, they're going to Kanto back as well, and we're getting another wave of reinforcements. Now on turn 2, the Cleric has arrived up here at the top, who is always annoying, and probably one of the biggest threats on the enemy team at this point is the Bow Cavalier over here. Obviously, it has huge range as a Cavalier ranged unit, Fire Sweep Bow is going to be effective against my flying team, and um, Fire Sweep, it means that I can't counter attack at all, so I can't uh, rely on Ninja Camilla to, to vantage, right? So that's going to be the first point of contention, first uh, point of engagement on turn two. We're going to use Brave Camilla to go ahead and eliminate the Bow Cavalier right quick. That's going to cast the Gravity on the Red Manikeet up here, keeping us safe from her. And then we're going to use the Pirate Pair to go ahead and take out the Blue Fafner as well. Easy target right in front of us, effective damage, color advantage anyway. Um, so exactly what we want there. We're actually going to sit tight here because that allows us to reposition with Ninja Camilla back to safety. So she's out of range. And now uh, the Green Mage can attack either Brave Camilla or Ninja Camilla. And that's totally fine. Uh, as well as Vanilla Camilla for that matter. Because we're actually going to move up here and finish off that Lance Cavalier that we weren't able to enemy phase 
uh, fully take out last turn. So we're going to go ahead and take out the Lance Cavalier here. And with her defensive abilities on enemy phase, she can tank the incoming forces on the right side just fine. She's going to proc the Aether to top off her health. And then the Axe Flyer as well. Whittle down both of them. The uh, Green Tome unit is going to hit into Brave Camilla. Again, it's fine, and that is actually going to cast Gravity again on the Red Manakeet. Getting another wave of reinforcements, the Cleric doing some shenanigans up here, we got the Sword Fighter, we've also got a Thief up here as well. The Thief does notably have Wind Sweep as well as Double Up on the bonus doubler, so uh, just be wary of that. That can be a pretty potent and dangerous combination. We're going to use Vanilla Camilla to actually take out the Axe Dragon and finish her off here. Proc the Aether again, that survivability and tankiness are really coming in handy. And we want to position ourselves to do the most damage on enemy phase next turn, so we're going to use Pirate Camilla to reposition uh, Vanilla Camilla back, and then shift uh, Ninja Camilla up into the danger zone to take on the forces on the right side. So the Sword Fighter is going to attack, get taken out, the Green Thief is also going to be able to warp and attack in. They have the, the sweep effect, but not against mages, unfortunately, for, for them, and they get taken out on this turn as well. Alir has started to make her approach, and this is where we really need to make sure that we're prepared to engage against her uh, in the next turn or two. So we're going to use Brave Camilla to take out the Sword Fighter here on player phase. Very, very nice. We're going to use the Pirate Pair to engage on the Blue Manakeet up here and take her out. And then we're actually going to shift over right here to put Ninja Camilla in the range of the Cleric. And that's actually really important because we want to make sure we have a specific enemy troop positioning next turn to be able to inflict gravity on a Leer as well as charge our uh, special for the Pirate Pair. So we're going to use Vanilla Camilla to reposition the Pirate Pair to safety. The enemy is going to make their approach. The Cleric is just going to ding against, uh, against Ninja Camilla and that's totally fine. That's exactly what we want. And then, effectively, this is the favorable position that we're looking for. So we're going to use Ninja Camilla to reposition the Pirate Pair to the left. That's going to free up this space so we, that we can use Brave Camilla to take out the Cleric, as well as inflict gravity on both Alir and the Blue Manakeet. We are going to use Pirate Hinoke and Camilla to take out the Blue Fafnir up here, and in the process, charge our Deadeye so it is ready on the following turn. Just shift Kanto back, and then reposition to safety with Vanilla Camilla to the left. Got two troops left. They're going to make their approach here. And we're perfectly lined up to one-shot Alir here with the Deadeye proc. We don't even need to use the duo skill at all. She goes down, but if you wanted bigger numbers, I guess we could have done that. And then uh, Brave Camilla over here on the left can saddle up here and take out the Blue Mage on player phase. And that is it. That's the strategy that I employed with Camilla Emblem to clear Legendary Alir in her Legendary Hero Battle on Abyssal difficulty. Let me know down below what strategies and teams you ended up using to clear this Abyssal level challenge. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave us a like, comment, subscribe to the channel for more Fire Emblem Heroes content. We thank you all so much for watching, for taking time out of your day to spend with us. We really do appreciate it. And until next time, let's predict those skies.